Hi, I'm Eric Lenask. We're here in New York City for this year's Real-Time Web Solutions Conference. Joining me this morning from Ingate, Steve Johnson, and from Primo Connect, Jonathan Lynn. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Good to be here. So w one thing's clear now as we head into the third day of the conference here. Um, Real-time web communications and WebRTC have uh, gotten to a point where we're seeing some real, legitimate use cases out there. Um, it's not just talk anymore. That is absolutely true. And some of the use cases, as Primo has demonstrated, are not around call centers or necessarily video, but about a new and different way of communicating with people that either uh, have high cost of communication to foreign countries or want to have the video experience and want to do it, in their case, from an app on their iPhone or their Android. And uh, we're proud to be, have been selected by Primo to actually be the driving engine behind their, their, their service, which has uh, been in beta now since January, and demonstrate, demonstrated and proven that uh, all of this works exceptionally well. And uh, Jonathan will tell you more about when they plan to go fully, fully live in the near future. Jonathan, give me a little more background on ex exactly what it is that Primo does. Uh, we're a communications platform that caters to uh, displaced immigrants who have left their countries and, and looking to call home and still be connected to home. So our service provides uh, international long distance calling peer-to-peer uh, -peer from the application or for video and voice uh, and directly to PSTN landline and mobile as well. So we service roughly about 200 countries, uh, 200 destinations around the world. And uh, in, we're still in beta, but we're getting ready to launch and we've already had over a million downloads already. So. Now, Steve mentioned that, uh, that you've chosen to work with Ingate. Um, why did you choose Ingate? I think some of this is still an experiment, right? I mean, there's still a lot of things that we're trying to figure out. There's a lot of routing on the back end. There's a lot of uh, making sure that the uh, quality of the, of the voice, the quality of the video, the streams are, are all kind of working in fine tune. So while there's some things that are very baked uh, and we feel very comfortable with, there's still a lot of going back and forth and fine-tuning and making sure that uh, the user experience is not hindered by some of the new technology that's coming out. Now, what's the difference between using you know, WebRTC as the technology, as the underlying technology for that communication, as opposed to some of the other um, OTT services that already exist? I think what, uh, what we've heard from the Primo folks, for example, is that it's an easier protocol to use for firewall traversal. Uh, as you know, in SIP, we have to rewrite headers, and we have to do a lot of manipulation to make sure that it gets through the firewall and that uh, we don't compromise the security of the, of the enterprise in, the, in most SIP cases uh, or in any other way compromise their network. Uh, Primo is looking for a, a simplified way of doing that, which WebRTC actually delivers because it uses STUN, which it relies on turn and ice, to actually get through those firewalls, if any, and uh, therefore it's a, an easier protocol to deploy. Um, it works extremely well, we found, and uh, I, th I think that's the nub of it. It's a little bit simpler than what SIP was able to do. Jonathan, so based on the service that you're offering, uh, your competitors are the, uh, the likes of the Skypes and the WhatsApp? Yeah, you, you have the... Um, applications and internet guys on one side, like WhatsApp, uh, Line, WeChat, who are, are using peer-to-peer. -peer. And then you have the other side of international long-distance calling, um, where it's kind of been around for a long time, uh, prepaid cards in, in, a, in any store that you go to. Sure. We're really merging that together uh, through an application as well as web and, and um, providing a, a much more evolved experience. And, you know, at the end of the day, we believe that we don't have a walled garden. Uh, you know, with some of these applications, you can only speak app-to-app. For us, because we are able to allow subscribers to call directly to a PSTN if these guys are not available uh, through the application, then you know there's obviously financial uh, or economies that we can leverage for, for the subscriber as well as for us. So you had mentioned that the, the, the target audience really is the expat community. Um, are you going to expand that to, to a broader demographic as well, or is that really what you're going to focus on? Um, you know... We're, we were incubated out of Ultra Mobile, who, who is really focused on international long distance and connecting uh, people who have left their home country uh, back to the areas around the world that they, they came from. Um, 
you know, at the end of the day, if it offers a low cost uh, ability to communicate from from here to across the street or from here to across the world, um, we're we're excited to to be that. But we're trying to fill a gap uh, where we, we currently see the market is is not there yet. And once we do that, uh, we'll look at embracing other other markets and, and other opportunities. Steve, with, with what Primo has been able to accomplish, um, and of course using the Ingate WebRTC companion on the back end to do it, what does that mean in terms of where has the industry come, and you know, with regards to WebRTC, its maturation and such? Well, I think uh, for us, it demonstrates that WebRTC is real, and we can use it in a real live uh, service that that people actually are using. As Jonathan mentioned, there's a million downloads in the last six months, and they're they're, they're demonstrating that they're getting a lot of simultaneous calls on the systems. Uh, I think, however, I personally believe that the WebRTC is still in its early days. I think there's a big opportunity here for using WebRTC in ways that we probably haven't even thought about yet. Um, we, we see some things, some other applications on the floor here and, and being discussed in the conferences which show me that, yes, there are some other applications that, that are driving WebRTC, um, that are driving real-time communication. Some of them I don't particularly understand why real-time is important or necessary, but it sh- that does demonstrate that it works. And I think that's the first foremost thing that we have to do is demonstrate a working protocol, and then, it, then people will pick it up and people will come up with ideas and opportunities that, like I said, we haven't even thought about yet. So I, I think WebRTC is real, and I expect over the next year, by the time we do this again, that we'll see some more things that are much more like Primo than some of the slideware that we see today. <laughs> well, I, I certainly agree, and, and I think uh, everybody here this week would agree that um, you know we're only at the tip of the iceberg. Jonathan, for folks who are interested in uh, learning more about Primo, um, get a hold of you, uh, try the service, how can they do that? Uh, well, one, they can go to uh, any Android uh, uh, app store or they can go to the iOS app store and, and download the app for free right now. Uh, we're currently giving away free minutes as well. Um, it's something that we believe will keep people coming back and using the service. Um, at the end of the day, we're still uh, making the tweaks and, and getting ready for launch. So um, they can certainly go out and use the service right now, uh, but know that there's a lot more coming uh, in the next couple of months for us when we release uh, commercially. Do you have a target date for uh, an official launch? Yeah, we're looking for the next uh, 60 days. Uh, so don't hold me to it, but we're, we're aggressively working around the clock uh, to try to get things out there. Um, there'll be a couple announcements in the next uh, you know, couple weeks, and, and for sure we're looking, you know, from a platform standpoint, we're not looking to service a million subscribers. We're looking to get to 50, 100, and that billion mark, right? So that's, that's where things get interesting. Excellent. Certainly lofty goals. Uh, wish you well. Gentlemen, thank you for being here, and uh, good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.